graphics and design learners. I'm Stefan Klein and this is How To EDD. And I'm excited because in this brand new series, I'll be preparing you for your final grade 12 exams. How am I gonna do that? Well, we're gonna look at paper one and paper two, and we're gonna deep dive into each and every question. What are the requirements of those questions? How do you prepare for those questions? What are the hidden marks in each paper? I'll be revealing that in this video series. So make sure you subscribe and ring that bell to get all the updates as I roll them out in how to prepare for your final exams. And then please, I'm desperate to see every engineer learner in this country fulfill their God-given potential and absolutely excel in engineering graphics and design. And you need to help me. Share this content with as many of your friends as possible so that each and every one can benefit from these videos. Right here, we're gonna get started right now and we're looking at paper one, civil analytics. Let's go. Right here, so I'll be discussing two papers, November 2019 as well as November 2020. And I've got the actual marking guidelines right here, which is used by teachers to mark at the end of the year. And we'll be looking at exactly where they give marks okay and for this exercise i'm going to then use these two official papers we'll start with november 2019 i'll have it as a download in the description right here so this is the first question and exactly similar to what you will find when you open up your paper in the coming days or weeks all right so the first one 30 marks take time during your reading time that 10 minutes that you have before the time to look through all the details that you will find in this actual uh, paper on the left hand side you'll see there is your land surveyor certificate there's going to be some symbols or legends that's important you've got your actual site plan and this might differ but um, of course it will differ it won't be this one but there's quite a few details that you need to take note of in here the north arrow and then make sure you read through your actual title block here okay all the way from the bottom the revisions um, this project proposed clubhouse that's going to be an important part of it and then all the way up we actually see these two places for signatures and the note to the contracts make sure you verify all of this before you start reading the questions okay then let's take talk you through the, where you're going to find these answers and these are mostly given to you it's almost those hidden marks in this paper okay who prepared the drawing that answer very quickly you're going to, going to find in your title block Okay, it's right here in the bottom, drawn by Clark. The second one, what is the drawing number? That's going to be just adjacent to that, 1818. What company printed the drawing? Then you've got, got to find the actual printed by Krypton PTY. On what date was this last revision made? Okay, then we get to the revisions, and of course, they're in the order first to last. So the question is, what date was the last revision? That's going to be the 20th of the 12th, 2018. Okay, what must the contractors do before commencing with work? That's not a question that they just asked, you know, out of thin air. It's going to have an answer on here. And if you look on top here, it actually says contractors must verify all dimensions and levels on site. So you can copy that sentence. Okay, uh, what is the finish on the pathway? Now there also that answer is going to be given to you. You can look at the actual pathway here and you'll note on the legends it says gravel pathway. So gravel is the finishing on that pathway. How wide is the new entrance to stand 2045? If you come down here, it's going to actually tell you here, new vehicle entrance 6,000. Okay, but this question is asked in meters. So that 6,000 need to be converted into 6 meters. What is the stand number of the amusement park? Okay, so this main stand here that we are working on is 2045. Adjacent to it, it says amusement park, and that stand number is 2045. Four, four. You see, I'm just taking you through these, but it's important to note that most of these answers can be just found by reading what is given. Right, what color is used for, to represent new sewer lines on a drainage plan? That you should know, that's brown. What does the abbreviation BIC stand for? Again, built in cupboards. Those are the things that you already should know coming into your exam, and you should uh, find all of those in your actual uh, workbooks. What is the broken line at one indicate? Now we have to just find our one. Okay, it says existing outbuilding, and you'll see here the broken line. That means that this building must be demolished or removed. So either one of those is the correct answer. 
What does the symbol have? Two indicate. Let's find two. That's down here. Okay, that's our north arrow symbol. What is the abbreviation of the component that you will find at junction at three? Let's look at that. Okay, that's a sewer line, and you should know by now that the sewer coming out of these buildings, meeting the main sewer line, needs an inspection I, I-E, right there, okay? And then, um, name the feature at four. That is, of course, from the legends here on top. It says shrubbery. Okay, what are the final two components of the sewer system? Now, if you look at the sewer system, you know, it starts here all the way and it ends here at a septic tank and a French drain. So that's also taken here from the legend. Right, which elevation of the clubhouse faces Comic Street? So, of course, look at your map. This Comic Street, this is the new clubhouse. North is in this direction, means south here. This is west, so that is southwest, is in this direction here. If we had to draw it here, it's directly in line. That's southwest, okay? Uh, make sure you get this right. It's not just going to be north or south or east or west. And then what features make up the new club facility? That's going to be found here. Proposed clubhouse, deck, and pool. That is all three items that makes up this new facility. In the space below, answer 18, determine the total length of the perimeter of stand 204 in meters. Okay, so they leave you a space here. Take note, this is three marks, okay? We are going to find the perimeter details. That's going to be given in the land surveyor certificate. And you're just going to differentiate between the two. The left side is going to be the corner heights in meters. Corner A, B, and this is the corner height above sea level. The boundary length in meters AB is 16.06, BC 7.05. So for this question, number three, determine the total length of the perimeter. We're just going to add all of these up and get a total here. All right. And if I do a simple sum, I add all of these up, I get to 191.80 meters. Okay. You actually have to show this calculation. So I'll show you the memo quickly here. This is the actual memo, and you'll see there, they added A, B, plus B, C, C, D, D, etc. So that was a mark, and then the final one, for the actual correctness of your sum, that's one mark, and the M there is your second mark. Okay, the third, uh, second last question, in the space below, determine the total area of the new clubhouse facility. Now here is the actual clubhouse given to you, with different measurements, okay. There's different ways of determining it, but area we know, it's length times breadth. So you need to go and you need to try and determine what is the easiest way to divide this into rectangles that will make up this drawing. So in this instance, they did it in this way. They said this is one rectangle, all right? Then they said this is another rectangle. And then they said this is another rectangle. And you can see here they've got all the dimensions. 5.3 times 5.9 gives me this surface, okay? 5 by the difference between these two gives me this this one. The 6 by the 5 give me then this one here. And the 7 by 4 gives me this one. Okay, so you're going to have to do something like that. There's other ways to have divided this. Let's look at the actual answer here. How did they award marks? So 5 times 6 plus 7 times 4 is the 58, 53. That's, so there's your one, tri one rectangle. There's your second one. There's your third one. Okay, they've actually added those two. There's actually two there. And that gives you your area in square meters, two marks for the correctness of the square meters, and one mark for the actual answer. Okay, last question here. In the space in the title, title panel, draw a neat freehand, the front view and top view of a sun's graphical symbol for a single wall-mounted urinal. That's going to be drawn in this space here. First things first, this must be freehand. Okay, let's look at the answer here. Of course, they didn't draw this freehand because it's printed, but freehand is going to be a mark. Then the actual correctness of your front view is a mark and your top view. Please remember, if you swap these around, you're going to lose marks. It's first angle orthographic projection, so we have to have our front view here and our top view here. Okay, that would have been technically our X, Y if you had that. All right, but this must be freehand for you not to lose any marks. Make sure you learn these symbols beforehand so that you're not caught off guard because, ladies and gentlemen, there are four marks in this total of 30. All right, that's paper 1, 2019. Let's look at paper 1, November 2020.
Right here, so the question one on top is also analytical, 30 marks, very similar layout to the 2019 paper. You have on the top left hand side your corner rights, uh, boundary lengths. On the left side is your corner rights, on the right side your boundary lengths. Then you have your symbol legend, there's some new symbols there that you might not know, but they tell you what it is. All right. Then you have your actual site plan, and this is again... Um, a couple of new features here, but I'll take you through that. We've got our title panel. We've got a revision part here on the top, our two signatures. All right, let's take them question for question. What is the reference code of this drawing? Okay, that's going to be gifted to you if you can find it on the actual paper. There it is, 422-2019. Who is the client? Now that one I've seen before, and you won't find it anywhere else but where it says project, Propose new flatlet and garage for Mr. A. Bobani. Okay, that is your client's name. It's hidden here. It doesn't have its own actual uh, area. It's hidden in this project detail. Okay, on what date was the drawing printed? That's going to be quick to look. Printed by and the date of print. Then how many stands border stand 2463? Okay. So I say I skip there one, I'll get back. 2463, this is stand 2463, and this is the actual fence on that, or the perimeter fence, okay. And then you see on the right hand side a stand with a number, and on the top there's another one. So there's two other stands bordering stand 2463. Question four was how many signatures are required? If you look at the top here, it says architect and client, so it is two signatures. Then, what is the number of the electrical substation? Now, let's go find that. It's normally labeled clearly, like it is here, electrical substation number 10810. Again, a lot of these questions, ladies and gentlemen, will be in the actual, gifted to you in the actual um, question. All right. What does the abbreviation IC stand for? Now you have to go find that here. It's going to be on your sewer and that is an inspection chamber. Okay, it's on your sewer line. You've got IEs, which is inspection eyes. And you have the septic tank here and the drain field to the left of it. It's all part of the sewer inspection chamber. Then what is the height of the precast concrete wall? And look at this. It's in meters. If you answer this in millimeters, you won't get your marks. So make sure you read your questions always to the end in meters height of the precast wall. If you look at where that precast wall is, there's an annotation that says 1,800 precast concrete wall. That's the actual height. So the answer there is 1.8 meters. Then um, what is the abbreviation of the component that you will find at one? Now you have to go find one. There it is. Okay, they've left this out. But look at where it's showing. It's to the end of our sewer line. And ladies and gentlemen, that is a rotting eye. R-E. Okay. I'm going to have the memo of this uh, paper also in the description below. So make sure you check that the full memo uh, if you aren't sure, if you miss something. All right. What is the color that must be added to new work as indicated in the revision? Add color for new work. This is always red. Okay, and that's a new flat. That this must be colored in red. Know your colors. It's also part of your workbook in the JPEGD workbook. It sets it out quite nicely. What is the color? Okay, uh, what does the chain line at two indicate? So let's find two. It's this one here. And those of you who've listened in class up to now, you'll know it's the building line. So this means that you cannot build. Any structure closer than three and a half meters from this fence. On top here, it's three meters from the um, fence. Okay. BL building line. Okay. Then we go on and uh, name the symbol at three. Okay. This here is right next to the LARPA. Now, this is a symbol that you might not have seen up to now, but in all these cases, just think about it a little bit if you are stuck. A LARPA is made out of thatch. So it's a thatch roof. And you have to have a earth conductor to take in this case of lighting to conduct the electricity down to earth so it's an earth conductor or lightning conductor okay then number four feature four here that is actually given to you again marks given to you ladies and gentlemen drain field all right there it is then what is the fall of the new sewer line it's again gifted new sewer line laid at 1 to 30. That means for every 30 meters, it has a 1 meter drop. All right, next one. Which elevation of the existing house faces the new flatlet? Okay, so they're asking us this elevation here. What is it called? It's facing the new flatlet. Now, you have to go down to your actual arrow. 
We know that this is direction north. Okay, very clearly shown for us. That's north. In other words, we've got south here. We've got west here and east here. Okay, now perpendicular to that edge is actually this direction, which is northwest. Okay, so make sure in grade 12, it's not just going to be north or south. It's, it's most likely going to be between northwest, east, uh, northeast, etc. Okay, make sure you understand that. Then, what is the total height of the retaining wall in meters? Okay, let's get to it. Here it is, clearly marked, retaining wall. Some of you might recognize uh, this as the symbol for retaining wall. So, look here, we also have our heights above sea level. Now, this is 352 meters, 353, 354, and then it jumps to 356. Why? I'm not sure, but the difference between the lowest point and the top point is 356 minus 352, which is Four meters. That is the height of the retaining wall. Okay. Um, determine the distance from boundary AD to the reference corner P on the proposed new flatted in meters. Again, in meters here, don't be caught out. So it's from P to the boundary. We know the boundary line is three meters and this distance is 11.89. So the answer is going to be 14,89 meters. In the space below, determine the total length of the precast concrete fence. This is a catch question here. Let me show you here in the space below. All right, show the calculations for the total length. Now, if you look at the precast wall, it starts here at corner B, goes all around to C, to D, to A, back to B. All the way, except here, we have a driveway of 3.5 meters. Now, on top here, we have our links. They tell us A, B is 59.5. B, C is 23.45, C, D is 61.5. So what we'll do is we'll add all of these together. That will give us a total, all right? And then we'll subtract the 3.5. So if I add all of these, subtract 3.5, the answer is 178,1 meters. Okay. All right, let's look at the next one. In the space below, determine the total area of the proposed new flatlet. And garage in square meters. Again, you must be able to do these calculations. It's three marks in this instance. Let's look here on the right hand side and see if we can do that. Right, so we have to then take our proposed new flatted garage. They give us some measurements here. And we're going to divide it into three rectangles. So we have our first one here, which will be the easy one. It's 10 by 6. That's 60 square meters. Okay. Then let's do... It like this because we know if I subtract 11.89 minus the 3.75 okay that's going to give 8.14 so this is 8.14 this distance okay and that is 5.5 so I've got 8.14 times 5.55 and that equals 45.17 7 and then the last one is this 3,75 here times what remains it's 2.5 that equals 9,375 okay and then we're going to add all of these up and that's going to give us our total of 114,55 square meters okay Make sure they ask us to round the answer off to two decimal places. You have to do that. You have to have your square meters. And that then is these three added together for our total area. Okay, last one in the space in the title panel. Draw in neat frame the front view and top view of a sun's graphical symbol for a single slab or stall type urinal. So there's two ways of drawing it. You can pick either one of the two. A single slab looks like this you've got your front view okay and this must be done freehand and then your top view goes below it okay that is for our single slab i'll show you the actual memo so you can either have drawn it this way or this way if, if you did the stall type urinal uh, both of them is going to give you four marks it must be free and you can see you're going to lose marks if not all right that's a quick overview this is really what you can expect in your analytical for paper one please take the time in your workbooks to study all the different symbols and be able to draw them without peeking all right 
Other than that, most of these answers will be given on the actual page. If you can read, you can achieve. In the next video, we'll be looking at what you can expect in question two of paper one. Thank you for watching. Now it's your turn.